With Victor Wembanyama literally breaking the NBA right now, I think people have forgotten about Seth Holmgren to a certain extent, who's having a monster rookie season in his own right. He's having one of the best rookie seasons in recent memory, in fact early on he looked like the best rookie in the NBA. However, I've already talked about his absurd rookie season in another video. In this video, I want to focus on the projections for his NBA career. What his prime and peak might look like based off what we have seen so far as a rookie. This video is going to be the same format as my Victor Wembanyama projections video, so if you want to check out that one after this one, I'll link that video in the description and pinned comment. I also plan on making this format a video about other young players like Brandon Miller, Paulo Boncaro, and others. But quickly before we go any further, if you're new and like basketball, I'd really appreciate it if you would like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, notified whenever I release a video. I make videos about basketball all the time, and liking and subscribing are the two best ways you can help me out in the YouTube algorithm, help support the channel, and help me reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of the season. Let's try and get 100 likes on this video so YouTube will recommend it to others. Anyways, let's talk about Chet Holmgren. Chet Holmgren is already productive and efficient as a rookie in terms of scoring, and he showcases an ability to score on all three levels of the court. Now, he does have a decent amount of his production assisted on. 72.6% of his production is assisted on, to be exact. However, I don't think that takes away from how good of a scorer he is right now, as well as his upside as a scorer. And I don't think that this idea of him just benefiting from others is completely true. In fact, his assisted production percentage is actually slightly lower than Victor Wembanyama's. Now, does Jet benefit from playing off of guys like, say, Goldis Alexander and Jalen Williams? Yeah, he does. However, at the same time, it's not like he's just taking easy dump offs at the rim. In fact, when you really dive into the unassisted production numbers, you really paint a picture of somebody that does have legit on ball scoring upside. 36.2% of his rim production is unassisted on, 36.1% of his mid range production is unassisted on, and he's taking a decent amount of volume in both of those areas. Compare that to just 2.8% of his three-point production being unassisted on. While his unassisted production isn't super high, again, he is a big man, and naturally, when you're playing with Say Giltis Alexander, who's one of the five to ten best players in the world, you're not going to get a ton of on-ball opportunity at a really high level. But the fact that it's his three-pointers that really drag down his unassisted production is encouraging because, again, it's not like it's all just dump-offs at the rim. A lot of his assisted production is from his three-pointers, and that shows me he's a great off-ball suitor given the volume and efficiency from three. I don't think the fact that he plays on a good team and benefits from playing off of good players should be used against him. On top of that, he also has really promising indicators with his on-ball reps in terms of the tape. And his ability to thrive off the ball combined with the on-ball upside gives Chet one of the most effective and versatile scoring profiles in the NBA. I do think you have a player in Chet Holmgren that you could potentially build an offense around as your main screw. He's very polished in terms of the technical side of the game, he's versatile, and he does have the wiring to be aggressive as a scorer and potentially take over games. While I'm not comparing these two players one to one, because I do think it would be a lofty expectation for Ted to reach these heights as a player, but the way I view his scoring is similar to how I view Kevin Garnett as a scorer in terms of upside. He can be the guy as the main option and will be very productive in that role and effective, but he can also still be really productive while also playing with other great players. My scoring projection for Jet Holmgren's prime is 24.7 points per game and with a peak at 26.8 points per game. And I think his production will be better than a guy like Kevin Garnett's mainly because of the fact that he's just going to take a lot more three-pointers. 
Chet is already a pretty good rebounder, 9.2 per game per 75 possessions, as a rookie is pretty good. However, he does have room to grow in this area, and a lot of it has to do with his strength. Chet is deceptively strong for his frame. He's added a decent amount of muscle since he was drafted, but he can still get stronger. He entered the NBA at 195 pounds, which, for reference, that's less than what Scoot Henderson is right now. And right now, he's around 208 pounds in what is his real rookie season because, again, he missed all of the 2023 season. And I think he probably maxes out at around 220 pounds. That may seem like for someone that's over 7 feet tall, but he handles contact pretty well right now for a guy that has the same weight you would expect from a 6'4 player. And I don't think he needs to bulk because I think bulking would hinder the movement skills that make him a special player. I don't think Chet has the rebounding upside of a guy like Jalen Duran, who's already one of the best rebounders in the NBA because he's just not going to be able to handle that kind of physical weight that Duran has. But I do think that Chet will be a very productive rebounder for his entire prime. The numbers are good right now, and with more minutes and a bit more strength, they can get even better. My rebounding projection for Chet Holmgren's prime is 9.6 per game, with a peak at 10.3 per game. Chet is also someone I view as a solid playmaker right now. He makes good reads within the floor of the offense, he has good vision, and he does have scoring gravity as well as upside to expand his playmaking. I think like most big men, his assist production long term will be based around how much OKC wants to use him as a playmaker especially considering he's playing with guys like Say and J-Dub, but I do think he will be a positive in this area long term, even if the numbers won't always suggest it. I see multiple potential outcomes for Chet as a playmaker. I think he could be like a Robert Williams, where the assist numbers don't reflect how good of a passer he is. I could see him being like Bam or even Sabonis, where they are putting up good assist numbers. It really depends on the role he's asked to play. But regardless of role, I do think he will have a real impact in this area. My playmaking projection for Jet Holmgren's prime is 4.2 assists per game, with a peak at 5.4 per game. Now, like Wemby, Chet's defense is already elite. He's in the 95th percentile for defensive estimated plus minus, and he's also fourth in the NBA in blocks per game. He's an absolute monster on defense right now. He's an elite shot blocker that can protect the paint, defend help side, point of attack, hold his own on switches, defend multiple coverages. His motor is one of the best I've ever seen. He has really high field for the game on that end of the floor as well. Times his contest well, covers a ton of ground. And the one area that is a bit of a concern with him isn't even that big of a deal in my opinion. He does need to add a bit more strength. However, he absorbs contact pretty well at his current frame for the most part, and even when opposing the offensive players get to those spots, they have a hard time getting the shot over him once they get to the spot, because with that, it's not about your ability to get to spots, it's about getting the shot over him. It's very clear this is a guy who will be in defensive player of the year conversations for years to come. He's going to impact defense with and without stats. He's going to be among the best shot blockers in the NBA for years to come because he's already one of the best shot blockers in the NBA right now. And with more added functional strength, he's only going to get better. My defensive projection for Chet Holmgren's prime is 3.1 blocks per game and 1.1 steals per game with a pick at 3.6 blocks per game and 1.4 steals per game. Chet Holmgren is someone that is already an incredible player, and the scary part is he's only going to get better. My projection for Chet Holmgren's prime is 24.7 points per game, 9.6 rebounds per game, 4.2 assists per game, 3.1 blocks per game, 1.1 steals per game, and my projection for his potential peak is 26.8 points per game, 10.3 rebounds per game, 5.4 assists per game, 3.6 blocks per game, and 1.4 steals per game. Like I mentioned in the Victor Wembanyama video, this isn't me saying that what I think will be like the whole peak season for him. Like I'm not saying that this is the stat line that will be his best season. 
I'm saying these will likely be his career highs and they can be spread out across multiple seasons over the course of his prime. I think he's going to be all NBA good pretty comfortably and I think there's even a possibility he's friends MVP good. It will be hard for him to win an MVP if he's playing with SGA but I think he's going to be the best second option in the entire league for his prime if say is there the whole time and maybe even once say starts to decline a bit Chet will become the number one option. I think Chet will be one of those guys you look at as an elite number two guy that you know can be the number one option on his own team and that team can be a contender potentially if built around him properly. I think he will make multiple All-NBA and All-Defense teams in his career. He will be a Defensive Player of the Year candidate year in and year out. And I think top 10 to 15 player is a realistic possibility. When you look at his offensive upside with how great he is defensively. And I'm confident he will at least get close to these projections. Because he's already one of the three best players on a team that could be the one seed in the West. And he's only a rookie. That's incredibly rare. And I don't care that he got a whole year off. He got to be around an NBA team. Even with that context... It's still really impressive that he's this good already. And it's still very rare for a 21-year-old rookie to be this good. Especially for someone with his perimeter skill set. On top of the fact that he's incredibly efficient from the field. Only time will tell with how good Chet will actually be. We can predict all day like I did in this video. But only time will truly tell. But I can't wait to see how his career pans out because he has a chance to truly be special. But that's the end of this video. If you made it to this point, thank you so much. Again, haven't already, like, subscribe, hit notification bell, be notified whenever I release a video. I'm making videos about basketball all the time and liking and subscribing are the two best ways can help me out on the YouTube algorithm, help support the channel, and I'm going to reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of the season. Let's try and get 100 likes on this video so YouTube will recommend to others. I'd love to hear about Seth Holmgren, love to hear what you guys think about his ceiling, how good do you think he is right now, do you still think he has a chance to win rookie of the year, what do you think of his chances to maybe be even more than what I project him to be, or do you think it's less, I'd love to hear all that in the comment section down below, but with that being said, have a nice day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.